sent you another video. And in fact, a fan called Joe wrote in sending us this video of Overtime with Bill Maher, which is the YouTube spin-off of Real Time with Bill Maher, where he and Bob Costas briefly discussed the Vince McMahon lawsuit and accusations and whether uh, Vince was in Hollywood... Well, sorry, if Vince was in Hollywood or actual sports, would he have been found out a lot sooner? So, uh, did you watch this yesterday? It's a brief yes, two-minute thing. Yeah. Yes, I, yes, yes, I did. Okay. And I want to add that Bob Costas, I would, I could take him or leave him. I th think he has that certain air about him. You just want to reach over and slap the crap out of him. He's had a lot of work done to him, hasn't he? I was looking at him. He looks like yeah. a waxwork of himself. See, I don't ever talk about people like you do, James. I mean, you just... But he's just had a lot of work done. He's like got white teeth in the entire world, and he's, he's had some injections you know, here and there. You know, you had a stroke. No, he didn't, did he? No, I just made that you up. Just said, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just, you, it's, oh, just to make oh, you feel bad. You're, <laughs> you're absolutely happy there. <laughs> I was going to say, what did he have a stroke in the. Okay, the but you're saying. Uh, now, what is your question? Oh, uh, just really, just like how big a story this is now. I mean, it's getting brought up on Bill Maher, it was on BBC, it's on everything. It's um, everywhere. It's everywhere. Which shows you the the power, <clears throat> and they're coming off a downtime, a really downtime for WWE, which was the last like two years. The last two years have been I mean, pretty good. I mean, the two years during COVID in 2019, 2018 were terrible. Well, well that's what I meant. Two years yeah. before that, but but it's all over the world, and. Harvey Weinstein, yeah, they, they see his movies all over the world, but nobody knows him outside of Hollywood, really. They don't even, if you put his picture up, nobody knows who that was. But you put uh, Vince McMahon's picture up, everybody knows who he is. Hmm. Brock Lesnar, everybody knows who, uh, who he is. Roman, I mean, WWE guys are worldwide. And they they know you all over the place, so there's, except one place, yeah. one place that's not been brought up, and that actually leads me to the main talking point here. North the, North Korea, no, the Undertaker, oh. the Undertaker yeah. did. I think it's like first proper podcast. It's on YouTube or wherever it is, and it was clearly done very recently, and it talks about. You, you know, Cody and The Rock and everything like that. You know, it's talking about all the like the latest news and everything, except that I'm pretty sure, because I didn't watch the entire thing, but I've seen no news stories about it, doesn't mention Vince McMahon at all. Now, I think you've said before, The Undertaker and Vince have always had a really close relationship, almost father and son. Mm-hmm. They did. Uh, how's The Undertaker ever going to address this? I don't think he does. He doesn't have to address it if he doesn't want to. He's not attached to the hip to Vince McMahon on TV. It's what the fans are going to judge that on. But he is attached to Vince behind the scenes. As I remember, I was in WCW with Mark, and I remember getting Mark a job in WCW on the phone one day with Jim Cornette. And they just had a, I think Dan Spivey or Sid go down with an injury. Sid. I think it, Sid. Yeah. Was it Sid? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Sid. And they were looking, they were called the skyscrapers or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for a tall guy who could actually work a little bit. And I said, Jimmy, I got the guy right here. I said, he's not right here, but he's, you know, in the next apartment over. I was in an apartment in Nashville then. And he says, can he call me? I says, yeah. He, when I see him, which will be in the next 15 minutes, I'll, I'll tell him to call you. So, and then Mark walked in right after I hung the phone up, maybe in five minutes. I said, okay, come here. I got something for you to do. I want you to call Jimmy Cornette in Atlanta because I think we got you booked there. Not we, but I think that they're looking for a guy there. I forgot what I said. He picked up the phone 
And in 30 seconds, he was booked in WCW. And he said, I'm six foot nine or whatever he was, six ten or and he says, Can you make TV next Monday? This was Wednesday. And they booked him the next Monday, which I thought was pretty unselfish for me because I was booking him in Memphis, which meant that all of a sudden I just let a guy go. And because business wasn't that very good anyway, that's when all the territories were dying anyway. But I says, Mark, I, I knew he wouldn't be in, he, he came from Dallas and came to Memphis and then he went back to Dallas and come back to Memphis because he had met a girl there and he wanted to be around her. So uh, we brought him back and, and then he went to Atlanta and, and I always told him, uh, should he try to go to, he asked me, he says, should I try to go to WWF or WCW? And I told him, I says, go to WCW first. Let Vince get a look at you without you being right there. And let him see you first. And then, because Vince gets a hankering for what he doesn't have. And he might want Mark, and he did, I swear to God. I just said that to have something to say, I think. But it, it turned out to be a gospel because Vince saw him, saw him, and Vince loved big guys. He just always has loved huge guys. Even if they couldn't work, he just thought them getting in the ring at 400 pounds, even though they couldn't move, he says, you know, that kind of sold his product, he thought. But when he saw Mark, and Mark is an athlete, and when he saw him, and he brought him up there and made him the undertaker, which I have heard, which I have heard is Vince's version of himself, that he'll never die. He has everlasting life, and he can have all these powers, and you, you, you just can't kill him. And that's what he brought him up there, and put a manager with him or then he ends up putting the Paul Barrow with him. <clears throat> Do I also had in Florida mm -hmm. who was an actual mortician. So it just all for the undertaker gimmick. It just all fell in place. Then they had that big uh, pay-per-view. And I think Mark went out there and killed a bunch of people. And he killed and Coco well. beware. I know that crikey drops yeah, right in his head. Yeah. Killed them, and I think he didn't. He have a million dollar man as his manager first. No, it was uh, Bruce Pritchard, brother love. Oh, that's brother. right, that's right. In, in in the mid nineties, when you were there, did you notice that Undertaker and Vince had a especially close relationship, even that far back? Well, I knew they. I would just go, and and Mark didn't say a lot about it. I knew he was Vince liked him. I mean, you can't create that. I mean. Even if Mark had tried to really be his friend, it wouldn't have gone because this is all Vince. Vince likes Mark. And not too long ago, I think when he went to Saudi Arabia, he had Mark went with him. Mm -hmm. And I remember Vince had a cane. He's walking with a cane. And they were going into the pay-per-view fight or whatever they were going into, the MMA fight. So I think Endeavor was there at the same time because mm -hmm. Mark knew all this was going on before the rest of us did. So, but he does, he, Mark is his, his friend and uh, how much they talk uh, privately, I have no idea. But I do know that, that Bench created Undertaker. He's his friend. He can confide in Mark knowing it won't get leaked anywhere. Well, so I think he tr he trusts Mark. You uh, actually uh, uh, preempted. I had another couple of fan questions. David Harazny wrote and said, how much do you think The Undertaker Mark Calloway knew? And you don't know, of course. Uh, Dylan 
in Vancouver, Canada, has also said, Hey, Dutch, how do you think Mark Calloway, AK, the Undertaker's relationship with Vince changes now? I know you used to think of Vince as a father figure. I doubt he does now. So how is this going to affect uh, Vince and Undertaker's relationship, do you think? I don't think it affects them one bit. Really? I don't. I don't think Mark is so... I mean, he may privately think of Vince as, as a little bit different. But I don't think... It's like if your father did this, would you still love your father, though? I mean, you're going to look at him differently. But I don't think – I think Mark is a is a pretty straight-up guy, and I think he pledged his allegiance to Vince when he – and he's got Vince to thank for everything. And I think he separates his friendship with Vince from what Vince did later on. Not who Vince has always done this. And Mark knew it then, but – it was a different mindset back in those days, but this is 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 hard to even be accused of doing what Vince has done. But I think Mark just won't say anything about it. We heard Kevin Nash try to explain his feelings about Vince. And it looked like they were like forgiving him, or I don't, I don't even know what Kevin Nash said. And then somebody else was was talking about it. Do they perceive Vince differently now? I think, I think you have to. Your perception of Vince has to be changed, but you don't have to tell people. I mean, just shut up. Don't say nothing about it. I mean, what if your brother went out and killed a bunch of people, and somebody said, "How do you feel about your brother now?" Well, he shouldn't have done it. You're not going to say that. You're just going to take the question and ignore it and keep going. I mean, it's especially because tough with, with taking uh, out because how... he's just got a podcast out now that he's trying to bring out. So uh, can he ignore Vince, it forever? I mean, uh, well, he could. Podcast. Uh, now, here's the podcast audience. They're different beings, too. And they will listen to what he's got to say. And if he came out with, with this, yeah, he'd have a, a ton of listeners, but he would have those listeners that's going to pick and parse. You like that word, parse? And parse every word. What did he mean by this? And what did he mean by that? Mark owes everything he's got right now to Vince McMahon. Everything, his house, his cars, his bank account, everything, his 20, 21 and 0 record, which we need to talk about that one day. I was there the night it was broken. I think we have. You talk about, well, you, you, <clears throat> you talk about some disappointed people, but they were like this. He just could not believe that it happened, and I don't think it should have happened anyway. No, we. Uh, I think we that even would be about it that, last week. Well, that would be one record. I don't think that should have been touched. I mean, let it go. I mean, he had it going, and so let him get hurt, even though it was against Brock Lesnar. I mean. To me, I'm talking. I, I would let let that run anyway, but but I don't think his his personal belief in Vince may have changed. I'm sure it has, but his uh, his his private belief. I don't think anybody ever ever know it. And I'd advise him about even talking about it on the on the on the pay per view. Really. What's he going to say? 